Hello and welcome back to ADHD Friendly Weekly News for Gamers with me, Kadea. Starting with Smite 2, the standalone sequel to the long-running mythology-inspired MOBA has been officially announced. With an alpha playtest coming in spring this year that you can sign up for right now. On release, it's going to launch on PC, Steam Deck, Xbox Series X and X, and PS5 with crossplay. Titanforge Games have also confirmed that Smite will continue to run as a standalone for the foreseeable future. Call of Duty 2025, nicknamed Saturn, is apparently going to be a semi-futuristic Black Ops 2 sequel. Previously, it was rumoured that Black Ops 2 remastered maps will be coming to the game, but now it seems it will be new and remastered maps. Popular YouTuber Matt Pat of The Game Theorist announced he was quitting the internet in a tearful YouTube video, and Tom Scott also recently announced that he was going to stop making his educational videos. And while it does feel like the end of an era for some people, it is understandable, and I will take bets in the comments of who else you think will be quitting this year. The reviews for Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown are in, and it's looking good! I've been fortunate enough to have played a few hours already and I'm enjoying it quite a bit, but you don't have to take my word for it, they've released a free 11 gigabyte demo ahead of release so you can give it a try yourself. I think that's an absolutely fantastic idea and more games should offer demos, if they're confident in their own game of course. It's official, we have our Abby. Caitlin Dever will be playing Abby in The Last of Us 2 HBO series. An unexpected choice, but I like her a lot. I just want the Abby arms, you know? Caitlin is no stranger to Sony games as she previously voiced and motion captured Cassie Drake from Uncharted. There's no news yet on who'll be playing the golf club, but I volunteer as tribute. Gamers have been upset this week as they found out the Nintendo Switch 2 is apparently only going to be about as powerful as the base PlayStation 4. Sure, it would be nice for it to be an upgrade on a 10 year old console, but look at Super Mario's Wonder, most of their games know how to make the hardware work for them. Except Pokemon. I don't know why Pokemon do that, but you can bet that I'm probably going to buy every game from them regardless. Also, it's a handheld console, I don't know why we're comparing it to non-handhelds. <laughs> Unity have laid off about 1800 employees, which account for about a quarter of its entire workforce. Twitch have laid off more than 500 employees, which is about a third of theirs. Discord laid off 170 employees, 17% of their workforce. Google laid off about 1,000 employees and Audible 100 employees. If you have been affected by any of these layouts, please get yourself on Twitter. Like, my feed right now is full of open positions being shared, people offering to review resumes, even a Slack workspace where you can join, speak to other people in your position. It's been 20 years since the release of Half-Life 2, and while I've heard good things about Half-Life Alex, there doesn't seem to be any indication that Half-Life 3 is coming. However, we were treated to a new trailer showing how Half-Life 2 RTX is coming along, focusing on Ravenholm, the creepiest level in the game. 28 years later, a sequel trilogy of films following 28 days later has been given the green light and will apparently be entirely ignoring the events of the film 28 weeks later. Literally just because this new trilogy is bringing back Danny Boyle and Alex Garland, who worked on 28 days later but not 28 weeks later. Riot Games have been criticised this week for tracing the work of an animator without appropriate credit, compensation or even permission. Fortunately, they have since responded and are keen to make it right with the creator, but this shouldn't even be happening in the first place. Come on, Riot. sag has signed an agreement with Replica Studios regarding AI voice usage in video games. And this will apparently allow members to safely license a digital replica of their voice. What a slap in the face to voice actors! Just hire them to read all the lines for Christ's sake! Again, not anti-AI, but there are specific use cases I agree with and a lot that I don't. Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age are coming to Nintendo Switch next week via the Game Boy Advance app. Please don't hate me, but I've never heard of it, but all my friends are really excited. Next week, Starfield is getting its biggest update yet, containing over 100 bug fixes and improvements. It will be hitting the Steam beta first, then all other players a few weeks later. Full update notes will be posted next week alongside the Steam beta release. Rainbow Six Siege has had a rocky start to the year, with a lot of reported downtime from players at peak times, and I mean a lot. Ubisoft went nearly two weeks without acknowledging the issue or providing any update until they broke their silence a couple of days ago. In addition to the welcome update, they're offering Bravo packs and 10,000 battle points to players who log in between the 12th and 21st of January, so don't forget to pick that one up. The Consumer Electronics Show, also known as CES, took place this week between the 9th and 12th of January. And there's far too many updates, so I'm just going to share the highlights. Sony announced writing is well underway for the TV show based on the God of War for Prime Video and Horizon Zero Dawn for Netflix. Nvidia announced their new RTX 40 series Super GPUs, offering more performance for very reasonable prices. I'd really like to get my hands on one of those. Samsung revealed the world's first transparent micro LED display. I couldn't find a price guide online, but given their 89 inch non transparent micro LED TV went on sale last year for $100,000, I'm willing to bet it's outside my price range. Apple confirmed the release date of their Vision Pro headset, which is February 2nd for Apple stores and online. You can pre order it right now. Asus, or Asus, revealed the ROG Phone 8 series. And as someone who had the very first ROG phone, I'm a bit confused as to who keeps buying them. It wasn't a bad phone at all, but even as a gamer, I'm a little confused at like who it's aimed at. And now 
I've got a whole section dedicated to just Twitch news, so if you're not interested in that, you can skip to the next section. Twitch is experimenting with letting streamers stream at 4K using AV1, but it's only available for those lucky enough to have NVIDIA 40 series graphics cards, and I have a 3080 Ti. However, this is what we were told by Twitch CEO Dan Clancy directly. I've already seen people claim that AV1 encoding is available on certain Intel and AMD GPUs, but I'm just going to wait for the official Twitch support site to be updated. For those of you who may not know, a video codec just compresses and decompresses media files. AV1 is a video codec specifically designed with streaming in mind, and I'm not sure how to explain it simply. It uses fancy masks to store just about enough data about blocks of pixels, which can be reconstructed into a decent enough image, as opposed to sharing a lot of data for each and every pixel. For the streamer, that means that you can stream a much higher quality image with a lower bitrate compared to other supported codecs. And I personally didn't think I'd see the day that we get AV1 on Twitch, so I'm very excited about that, and I'm excited to have a better quality stream. Twitch are also going to be supporting the HEVC codec, also known as H265, so at least those of us without 40 series GPUs have something new to play with. And they're also experimenting with allowing streamers to stream up to five concurrent streams with different encoding options for maximum quality and reach. This is fantastic for non-partnered streamers who aren't always afforded transcoding options, you know, the ability to change the quality as a viewer in the bottom right hand corner. And I believe you also need to opt into it to try the newly supported encoders like AV1 and HEVC, but correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> streamers all over social media have also been sharing their shock to find out that Twitch isn't profitable. It hasn't been profitable for most of, if not all of its entire existence. We know this. The amount that Twitch makes from advertising and taking that cut from streamers doesn't exceed its operating costs, which is very high. In 2021, we found out that only 0.01% of streamers make the equivalent of US minimum wage on the platform. There are a lot of active streamers who don't earn the platform enough money to cover the resources that they personally use. I'm probably included in that. The whole platform is carried by advertisers and the top 1% of streamers. I will take this opportunity to remind you once again, if you do happen to be a Twitch streamer, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Make sure that you are making content elsewhere, just in case, just in case. And also this week, I hit 17,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you for following. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for showing me some love. I do really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, do subscribe for the next video, which will be coming to you next Sunday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.